Four cases as at yesterday. Today, we have received confirmation of another three cases of coronavirus. Following tests that were carried out by the National Influenza Center as well as the Cambry Laboratories in the country. Therefore, we now have in the country seven confirmed cases. It is very, very important to note that all these cases have been imported cases from outside the country. The first two case, cases related to these three that I've just mentioned are a couple that had traveled from Madrid, Spain on the 4th of March 2020 through Dubai, arriving in the country on the 5th of March. The third case, among the three that I have now mentioned, involves a Burundian national who had traveled from Dubai to Kenya, arriving on the 17th of March 2020, and this one was picked by our surveillance team with high temperature during routine screening at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. And that establishes, I think, what we have been saying all along. We are able to, to screen and we are able to pick and we are able to determine. So this one was a case in point, an establishment of that fact. So what we are doing now is that uh, tracing of persons who may have come into contact with these patients is now ongoing. 18 cases are currently admitted at Bagathi Isolation Center. Seven others have been screened out and are negative. Samples from the remaining 11 suspected cases are currently being processed in our two designated laboratories. The seven who tested negative are being processed for discharge to continue self-quarantine at home under close supervision of the Ministry of Health staff collaborating with the country surveillance teams. I want at this juncture to make a special appeal to Kenyans who are traveling from outside the country. It is now clear that the threat that we face, first and foremost, is the threat from Kenyans who are coming from overseas, or Kenyans who have, visit, who have visited overseas countries. And that is why we had said that um, people, Kenyans who are coming in, must self-quarantine. And we are happy to say that a lot of people have complied, but at this juncture, we also want to appeal to the general public that if you know that an, an individual who has agreed to self-quarantine and you can see them not self-quarantining, please report them to our toll-free number, 719, and let me remind such people that it is an offense punishable by a jail term for you to say that you are going to self-quarantine and you do not. And effective today, any Kenyan who is traveling from outside the country must sign a legal form at the airport, must sign a legal form to confirm 
that they are going to self-quarantine themselves, which gives us the instrument to actually jail you if you do not follow the procedure. If you do not and the public pronounces you as such and it is proved as such, we will then take you, self-quarantine you forcibly for 14 days and then charge you in a court of law. We continue to improve our preparedness for the disease. Today, for the first time, via a video conferencing capacity which we have just installed today, our doctors were able to carry out uh, a video conference with Chinese doctors. The ones who have been handling the disease in Yuhan were able today to talk on a one-to-one, -one, not only with the Kenyan doctors, but also with a number of about 20 countries. We were in a video conference, all of us, with 20 African countries. This is an extremely important step in terms of a knowledge share, and they gave us tremendous amount of knowledge, which we believe will also go a long way into assisting uh, our people. And when we talk about self-quarantine, at one time, 1.4 billion Chinese were self-quarantining. In Yuan alone, there was a forceful quarantine of about 60 million people. So let's, 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 let's put things in perspective and, I, and tell our citizens that if those people can do it, why can't we infuse discipline within ourselves and do the same? And I appeal to Kenyans to please, please, please um, understand that this is something that we must do. On the issue of uh, social distancing, we continue to emphasize that we do not wish to see any congregations anywhere. We do not want to see people congregating at any point. And this, again, will go a long way into stoppage of, um, uh, of contacts that can create the spread of the disease. When we listened to the Chinese advice that they were giving us, they repeated over and over again the issue of washing your hands, the issue of uh, distance, social distancing, as the key to why the Chinese infections are coming down at a very, at a very fast rate. And they are releasing people now, people who have been on self-quarantine, people who have been on, uh, uh, on government quarantine, you know, they are slowly beginning to release those people from those areas. And that is because of the discipline that they have uh, exhibited. So, in a nutshell, I don't want to add anything else other than that. That is the, that is the current uh, status in the country. As I said, we are looking at uh, the situation as it unfolds. We will be announcing further measures that we want to take. This afternoon, there is, um, as you know, a, a meeting in State House, and uh, during that meeting, and after the meetings with the, uh, the executive committee, the, with the coronavirus committee, we will probably be announcing a few more measures that we wish to take in order to contain this disease. I want to thank Kenyans, those who are obeying, and those who, from the media, especially the media, I really want to thank you again and again for the work that you continue to do to support uh, this effort towards securing our people. Thank you very much. Can I ask a question, but just one question per person? Just one. Let me, let me just respond to that first. You know, let, let, I explained yesterday. The fact that you are on self-quarantine does not mean that it is not compulsory. It is compulsory self-quarantine, so to speak. Because what we cannot do is that whenever there is a big outbreak, there is no reason to put you in a hospital because essentially, what, that's what you are saying. 
There is no reason to put you in a hospital if you can take, if you have got a bad code. If you have got a very bad code, which is essentially what this one is. It's a severely bad code. It is not necessary. If you have disciplined yourself, it is not necessary to take you to a forced isolation. We only do that for two reasons. Number one, you have, you have clearly uh, demonstrated that you, are, that you can't. Or number two, you do not have the environment in which you can do that. In which case we will provide that environment. Now let me also explain that we are, when you talk about government quarantine, it is not in Bagathi. You know, we are not quarantining you in Bagathi. We are quarantining you in government designated quarantine areas. For example, from yesterday, we are, est we are establishing the, the MTCs as potential quarantining areas. The MTCs are very suitable for the KMTC. It's very suitable for this purpose. They have got the structure, they have got the doctors, they have got the, the kitchens. So if we determine that you should be self we can quarantine you, we will take you to an institution such as that one. It is not necessary if you don't have to. On the issue of uh, uh, transport, as uh, you noticed uh, from the other day, our people are training. We continue to train the transport sector to... Um, to keep sanitized vehicles, to keep sanitizing people, to keep out anybody who is showing, exhibiting any symptoms uh, of the disease. But you are also aware that people are staying home. And because people are staying at home, then the issue of transportation becomes less and less and less necessary. So, but we don't want to stop anybody because, because people have to go and get some, some food. People have to go and get um, uh, provisions for their houses. So at, up to this time, we have not said that we are stopping completely. Of course, if the situation were to warrant it, then we would have to, to take that action. But for now, we are saying as long as we can establish that we can safely move people, then we will, we will not stop it for now. Yes, two other questions? Okay. As I said, this, that situation, we will come to that point when the a national emergency committee has determined. And also, we are not just working on the basis of just ourselves. We have got behind us a very strong team of uh, experts in this area uh, who are modeling. They are carrying out modeling as we speak. Even uh, when we are here, they are still carrying out modelings to tell us they have identified a person here, a person there, a person there, and according to their modelling, this is the likely scenario. So depending on that advice, that is when we take those decisions. Because it is, we, we must be clear that we don't just take decisions on the basis of a feeling, you know, that Mutai Kagwe has a feeling. No, 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 no. We, we do it empirically so that we take decisions uh, that are based on facts and uh, figures. So let me clarify that. Let me first of all say we had sent, we have already sent to each county the initial. Uh, kits that were crucial for any emergency. It, we sent 25 kits to every county, each, each county. And from tomorrow, we are now going to, dispa to be dispatching everything else in accordance with the requests of the counties. Now, let us not forget that uh, because of global shortages of these items, we have to keep on searching for them. And the good fortune is that we have not run out of anything yet. And uh, thanks to the Kenyan uh, business acumen, we are also bringing in, they are also bringing in some of the approved 
uh, items by WTO. Now, uh, let me also add this. As far as the hand sanitizers are concerned, we have uh, infused a system in Kemri, working with uh, sugar companies such as Mohoroni, who are the ones who produce ethanol. We are working to flood the market with uh, hand sanitizers. So those, as I said yesterday, one of the ways of resolving any overpricing of anything is basically increasing supply. So we are going to increase supply to the extent that that business may not actually be very viable after a while. Thank you all very much. Okay, one more. What, as I said yesterday again, and I want to repeat this, when you meet the case definition, it makes sense to test you. But if you tested each and every person in Kenya who walked in and wanted a test, first of all, if you don't even have a temperature and you are not, and you are not showing any sign of anything, then why, why, would you, why would I test? I haven't tested because I haven't developed any symptom. But if I did, I would want to test. And, now, and when they test, then it is not charged for. There is no charge on that uh, on the test. Let me just clear that. And we are improving on the on our capacity to to charge. Final one then. I'll let the DG respond to that. Uh, thank you, Waziri. Yes, indeed, there was a patient who was in Baghdad and apparently left the facility. And uh, through the security apparatus in the country, we were able to trace the patient to wherever she was, and we brought her back into Baghdad and tested. Of course, it was positive, and we have traced the contacts of this particular patient. As at now, we are following 85 contacts actively, and we'll be giving you updates on the outcome of the contacts that we are following. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll give you further.